Make sure we're live on Facebook. All right, here we are. We're doing a special live stream today. Let me know that you can hear me all. And uh, we've got, we're on we're on Instagram here too, and we're also on Facebook as well. Uh, so we've got we've got like a three way live stream here. Hello Instagram, hello YouTube, and hello to the Facebook family too. And uh, so it's halfway through January, and I thought it would be nice to sit here with you all. Uh, and if there are any long term ish vegans in here. We're going to gear the conversation towards like, when did you first start your journey kind of thing? And uh, what were some of the things that you would have liked to have known at the start? You know what I mean? So they're the type of questions I'm going to be uh, taking. And anyone who's not vegan, we hope that you're in here so we can uh, answer your questions or I can help you out with some of the questions that you have, recipes, little tips and tricks and things like that. So um, we're going to start going through and answer those types of questions. I, I, I know what it's like when you first start, um, you know, you think, oh, my God, like if I take meat off of my plate and dairy and eggs out of my life, what will I eat? That's what I used to think. It used to freak me out, actually, the idea of not eating animal products back in the days. But obviously it's uh, when you're motivated, I think it's, easier than what you think. And uh, once you know, you go, oh, wow, it was actually a lot easier than I thought. So what I like to say to people who are like really new um, is that, uh, you know, veganize, like veganize what you already eat. So like, let's just say in the morning, you have cereal, fruit, yogurt with milk, you might have eggs and uh, toast with butter. Uh, or you might have, I don't know, what's another breakfast treat people have just veganize what you already eat in a way all right so you can uh, scramble tofu instead of eggs and scramble tofu if you're not doing scramble tofu it is amazing a lot healthier for you than eggs and more ethical obviously and uh, if you don't know about the egg industry you should look into it because it's in there's many practices of the egg, egg industry that are very cruel and all those egg layer hens get cold killed um gassed so yeah, veganizing what you already eat. Um, if you get eat burgers, get a vegan burger. Still eat your bread. A lot of most bread is vegan. Uh, you know, if you like mayo, there's plenty of vegan mayonnaise out there now. Especially if you're in the UK, which is like the land of veganuary. In the UK, is uh, it is cranking right now. If you just you just have to go on the like I was on the ASDA website making an order today, and they have a like the supermarkets, even Tesco, they have a veganuary tab that you can just click on and all of the vegan products are there. And even like um, shower gel and like, uh, you know, uh, uh, cosmetic products and bathroom products, cleaning products, all of those things as well. I would uh, argue that you should first focus on food. The food is most animals on earth are being mass bred exploited and killed for food and that's where most of the suffering is happening that's where most of the environmental damage is happening and that's where i think you should direct your attention to first um but if you're doing veganuary then you you know you kind of you, you want to you want to kind of do everything vegan for veganuary don't you so you like you want to know about the, the other cosmetic products and things too so let's go through anyone got any um any questions um here okay here we go Um, let's have a look. So I was eating meat for up 26 years. Okay. So, um, I, uh, basically all I ate was like steak, chicken, um, bacon almost every morning. I'd have a bacon and egg muffin almost every morning. Um, I used to go to the butcher and get T-bone steaks and they would uh, saw the so, so there'd be a whole side of a cow there and they would saw the T-bones off for me right there. And the, so I'd have really big, thick uh, T-bones. So I was an avid meat eater and I had a realization. It was a, um, first it, it started off with me having um, 
realizing that plants were actually good for you and they made me feel a lot better and I lost a lot of weight eating mostly plants. But then I had a, a, a seed planted about karma and I was like, you know, someone said something once that really stuck with me and he's like, you know, when you eat an animal, you you sort of take on everything that animal went through, their suffering for their entire lives and the, the fear and adrenaline, adrenaline that went through their body when they were killed. And uh, I, I just felt something wrong with eating the body of a animal that was killed against their will. And that was a seed that was planted and later on it flourished and I took action. I also didn't like to be a hypocrite. I didn't like to say that I cared about animals while there was a piece of an animal on my plate. I used to see people saying like, save the whale, save the dolphins, or they were concerned with orangutans in the jungle being harmed, you know, and I was just like, I've seen them talk speaking about these animal issues and then I also seen that they were eating animals and I could see the hypocrisy there and I you know I liked dogs I really cared for dogs and and I was I just started to analyze why we care for some animals and eat others it didn't seem consistent to me it's it seemed just hypocritical I didn't like having that hypocrisy in my that feeling of cognitive dissonance. I didn't like it. So I just, I had to align my actions with my beliefs. So I didn't have that feeling anymore. And then I felt better. Um, so let's have a look. Anyone here who is doing Veganuary needing some tips? My first, my, my first tip actually, when I was talking about veganizing what you already love. So if you love if you like eating burgers, find a vegan burger that you like. If you like cheese, find some vegan cheese that you like. I wouldn't just try one vegan cheese uh, because you might not like that type of vegan cheese and everyone's a little bit different. Some people like the, the more milder the more milder cheese. I like tasty, stronger, mature cheese. And uh, you can get like different versions of vegan cheese. And a lot of them, the free from range in Tesco is really tasty. That's my the, the one that I like. Uh, Vio Life have got a good mature cheddar and they've also got more milder uh, vegan cheeses. So like I would say like don't just try one vegan product and go, oh my God, I don't like it. I'm never going to like another vegan product ever again. I think uh, give it give it a chance and you'll definitely come across some amazing stuff. And there's also this thing that happens with your taste buds after a little while um, where your taste buds change, you know, you do, you, you, you start going, oh, wow, I actually really like this. And it takes a little bit of time for your taste buds to, to calibrate. So give it a little bit of time and find a plant milk that you like because there's so many and some people don't like oat milk. I mean, who doesn't? How could you not like oat milk? But also you might be so used to drinking like full fat dairy milk that when you switch over to oat milk, you might be like, oh, that's a bit, that's a bit strange. But give it a bit of time and you'll, you'll just calibrate. And then when you go back to drinking dairy you'd be like oh wow that's that's strange now so give it some time oat milk soy milk um there's nuts milks there's all these different types and you can get them at any budget at any budget so recently i was in morrison's and they had um i think it was like 50p 50p for a liter of soy milk so that's super cheap so you can find really good deals um iceland in the uk is especially good uh, I love the no bull burgers. They're super cheap. They're like a Beyond Burger, but a lot cheaper. So it's like two pounds for two, whereas the Beyond Burger, I think it's five pounds for two, which I'd say is a, a lot, of, a little bit on the pricey end. Um, and then you can even get cheaper. So in the freezer section at Tesco, you can get cheaper vegan burgers. You know, um, so it, you can do this at any price range. And I would say the cheapest foods in the supermarket are, you know, your rice, beans, lentils, pasta pasta sauce i did a video on my channel and it is called i'll get it up for you right now but I, I actually went into tesco's with like 20 quid to do a week's worth of shopping and i'll show it's uh i'll, I'll get the the name of it right now for you i've actually got a, a playlist on my youtube channel and it's called how to be vegan at on my youtube channel how to be vegan at playlist on joey carbstrong and it's got how to be vegan at all the supermarkets but just let let you know this was filmed a couple of years ago so there's much more vegan stuff at the supermarkets now. So the, the video is called Extreme Budget Extreme Budget Weekly Vegan Food Shop. And like you can get like a bag of oats, 800 grams of oats for like a quid or something like this ridiculous, which is like a week's worth of oats. And you can get frozen berries, which are like 
you know, if you go into the berries at the supermarket, they're pretty expensive. Like you get like 150 grams of blueberries for like, you know, it was like two quid or something like that. But if you get the frozen berries, they're actually frozen really ripe. So they're actually tastier and they're cheaper. So you can get more nutrition for less money. Um, let me have a look here. What someone's gone? Someone says chicken is the the easiest flavor, one of the easiest flavors to replicate. It, it, there's amazing vegan chickens uh, these days. Vegan chickens would you know the vegan chicken replacements these days, and they're actually it's I think it's one of the the vegan meats that are done really well. Um, so there's a, there's a lot out there, and they're all like I rarely find vegan chicken that I don't like. I think that they're, they're doing a really good job. Iceland have got a really good one. Um, VFC is a, a fantastic one. Tesco have got really, really good ones um, in their plant-based section. I just, I, I just haven't really found one I didn't particularly like. But you might be different, especially when you're, when you're transitioning and when you're uh, trying this out for the first time. I would also say um, that while you're, while you're doing this. Look at some of these documentaries like, you know, there's some really good documentaries. I would recommend this, though. If you are doing Veganuary or if you are curious about being vegan or if you are a new vegan and you haven't yet seen the film Dominion, I would recommend that you either watch, watch it. If you can't watch it because it's quite graphic, at least listen to it. Listen to what they are saying because uh, it's got really good information on all of the industries. It's very comprehensive. So it talks about not only uh, animals who are used for food, it also goes into other industries too, like entertainment, uh, pet stores, puppy breeding, um, fishing industries, you know, which is food as well. But uh, hunting, it really uh, opens your eyes up to a lot of different things. So I would recommend that. Um, Here we go. This is a really good question from Cheryl. Cheryl says, I started following you recently and I've made the decision to go vegan. My only worry is getting the correct nutrients to stay healthy. Any advice? Well, I would say this, Cheryl. Did you often track your nutrients before you went vegan? If the answer is no, then um, you probably wouldn't know what nutrients you're even lacking in now. If your answer is, yes, I've been tracking all my nutrients, then all you would have to do is keep tracking your nutrients, but plug in, go into Chronometer, which is a, it's an app that tracks nutrients, go into Chronometer and plug in vegan foods, and then you'd be able to see what nutrients you're getting. But I, I would assume that you haven't been tracking your nutrients as a non-vegan. So my question to you would be like, as a vegan, what would what nutrients do you think you would be lacking? I, I personally think like you would probably be mostly okay um, because vegan food is fortified. Like vegan milks, uh, there's this amazing stuff. It's called nutritional yeast. And if you are doing Veganuary or if you're a new vegan uh, and you haven't heard of nutritional yeast, then uh, you really should get around it. It is amazing. And it actually, it's got a, a spectrum of nutrients in it, even zinc, which is one of the tougher ones to get, but it's also full of B12 and it's got a cheesy nutty flavor and you can sprinkle it on your pasta and it's super healthy, super low in fat, high in protein, amazing stuff. Like longer term vegans will tell you it's very addictive. You know, you it's got very d delicious. So I would say you, you could be fine without even supplementing, but I wouldn't recommend that because that would be irresponsible. I would say to supplement I have a, a multivitamin each day, which has a B12 in it. It also has vitamin D because I'm in England and there's not much sunshine here. So um, that everyone should be supplementing vitamin D. Like uh, they actually add vitamin D as a supplement to dairy milk. It doesn't just contain vitamin D. So like, I just think everyone should be supplementing B12 and vitamin D generally. Uh, the reason that <laughs> meat has vitamin B12 in it is because... Um, they inject it into the animals. They add it to the animal's feed. So they're supplementing the animals with B12. So that's interesting. You, if you, I've been onto farms and I've seen Colbert. It's Colbert. 
um, supplements that they give to the animals. So, I mean, it doesn't make sense to grow the animals to kill them for the B12 to get out of their blood or to kill them to get the iron out of their blood. I mean, you can just get the iron from plants or the B12 from a supplement, you know, and uh, it seems a lot more rational. Uh, how can you be sure you're getting all your nutrients? You can never be sure. You could be, you could intake nutrients. You might not be absorbing them properly. I mean, that could be a that's that's not a problem related to a whole foods vegan uh, diet. That's uh, a problem that you already have, you know. And you don't know that until you get your blood tested. So what people often do, which is interesting, but they 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 go vegan. They start eating plant based diet, and then they get a blood test and they're like, well, you know, I got worried because I've been eating a plant-based diet for a while. So I got my blood tested and then they get the results back and they go, oh my God, I'm deficient in something, whatever that is. I'm deficient in X, whatever X is. And then they start saying, well, it's because of the plant-based diet. It has to be, but they didn't get their blood tested before they started eating a plant-based diet. So there's no way to determine whether or not they already had deficiencies. And, you know, when they got their blood tested later on, you could see those deficiencies. So it's not clear whether whether or not it was the plant-based diet causing it. So I would always say the only way that you can test if you're deficient is not by how you feel, it's by testing your blood, doing a blood test. You can do things that are like insurance policies, like eating a wide variety of whole foods. So make sure you get your greens in, even if it's in a smoothie, handful of greens. I like doing these little juices. So I, um, mm. apple, carrot, lemon, ginger, some greens in there, kale. And uh, like these juices make you feel amazing in the morning and you can get a bunch of different greens and nu uh, nutrients in, in one whack. Um, eat whole grains, um, eat beans, legumes, um, some nuts and seeds like flax seeds, good for omegas. Um, you can also get a vegan algae, uh, supplement. It's a way of getting you know, omega-3 directly from where the fish get it from because they get it from the, the the sea vegetables. So you can actually get it directly from the sea vegetables instead of killing the fish, eating the fish, getting all the mercury uh, along with omega-3s. So I would say that that's another strange thing humans do to get nutrients, uh, killing sea animals to get the nutrients out of their bodies when you can just go directly to the source and uh, get the algae supplement. I personally don't do algae supplement. I just, uh, you know, I, um, I eat some chia seeds, um, hemp seeds, flax seeds, things like that, greens. So basically, what to take away from this, make sure that you're eating a lot of fruit, you know, e eating a sensible diet, uh, a wide range of whole foods. If you're going to do the vegan junk foods, do them, do them, but make sure you have balance there. Don't just start eating like mock meat, vegan meat, vegan cheeses, vegan, uh, the, the McPlant burger from McDonald's soda, not going outside or exercising and going, Oh my God, I feel like crap. You know, make sure you're sensible, have your B12 supplement, you know, have your vitamin D supplement supplement. If you're in a, a cloudy country like this and, uh, you know, should be fine. And if you've got an issue, like here's another thing as well, Cheryl before, because a lot of people could run into this and, because it's Veganuary, and uh, I want to make sure that everyone just thinks of these things. When people start eating plant foods, they might say they might eat a little bit more salad and a little bit more fruit now, and uh, they might just remove meat and not replace the calories from the meat. So they've just removed meat, they've removed cheese, they start eating a, more, more salad, not enough grains, and then they they after a few days, they've depleted their energy because they don't have enough calories. So be super careful of your calorie intake if you're removing a product like meat and fatty, fatty meat and fatty cheese, um, you know, and then not replacing those calories. Like say you replace fatty cheese with like soya yogurt, which is like less calories. And then all of a sudden you're eating salad, you're eating some fruit, you're, you know, not eating, having enough energy. And all of a sudden you feel tired, you feel hungry, you know, because you're not eating enough calories and people go, well, I'm deficient. I must be deficient. It must be the vegan lifestyle. It must be plant-based eating. That's causing this, you know, I better stop. I better go back to eating meat. So yeah, that's something that 
people should be careful of. Make sure you're eating enough rice or pasta or bread. And, you know, if you like some fatty foods, avocados, vegan cheese and um, nuts and seeds and getting enough energy in, you know, get enough foods, enough vegan foods with energy to replace the calories that you were getting. If you're super stressed and worried, I personally don't often do this unless I'm like fully in training mode, but you can get an app. It's called Chronometer and you can plug your foods into Chronometer. It's really easy. It's free. Fit My Fitness Pal is another one that's free that you can use. And uh, you can just plug your foods in and then you can, I like Chronometer because it's free and you can see your nutrient spectrum. So you can say, oh, I had 300 grams of cooked rice. You know, I had a handful of blueberries, this and that. And it gives you a really good idea of what nutrients you're getting and how many calories you're getting, you know, especially if you're active, you should, you might want to know those things, but yeah, look, don't stress. Don't worry too much. It's uh, not a big deal. If you weren't tr tracking your nutrients in a crazy manner before, then you can be a little bit relaxed about it, but you know, be sensible as well. <sighs> so, So let's have a look. Let's see what questions we have here. Have we got some questions on Instagram? We do. Um, so people are talking about what do I think of lab-grown meat? Um, yeah, lab-grown meat, I support it uh, that as long as it's done without the exploitation and cruelty to animals. Um you know, if they just take a small biopsy, a, a cell from a chicken, and it creates an infinite amount of chicken flesh, and it saves a bunch of chickens, then of course I support it. Um, I would say that it's ethically vegan, but it wouldn't be dietary. It wouldn't be plant-based in dietary terms, but it would be vegan in ethical terms if they did it like that. Um, thank you. Oh my God, there's a big donation here, CDN the third. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it a lot. Um, <clears throat> Any questions for new vegans curious about um, how to, you know, some tips, some new tips? So like I said, um, so we've talked about nutrients. We talked about uh, we should be watch, watch Dominion if you can. Uh, if you can't watch it, at least listen to it. Listen to the entirety of the film so that you're clued up on a lot of what happens to the animals. And, um, yeah, like we talked about uh the supermarkets where to find things. I've got my how to be vegan at series on playlist. And also there's like, it's veganuary right now. There's vegan stuff everywhere. I don't know if you'll have a problem there. Um, places like uh, Subway, McDonald's, Burger King, um, KFC, they all have a vegan option there. Um, also you can use an app, which I've got to drop this app in here. Who's got a pen and paper? You got a pen and paper? Anyone got a pen and paper? Happy cow. It's called Happy Cow. Get this app, Happy Cow. No matter where you are in the world, if you're traveling, if you're, you know, wherever you are, Happy Cow is a directory for vegan options. So, you know, you could just type in where you are. They've got that. You'll be able to find full 100% vegan restaurants or just places that have a vegan option there. All right. And uh, Happy Cow has saved me a bunch of times when I'm looking for places to eat. Um, and I might be in some obscure area that I haven't been before, and I just whip out the app, Happy Cow. You can actually just use the website. It's free, but I uh, use the app, and uh, it will you know, it will direct you to amazing vegan options wherever you are. Happy Cow is a top tip, okay? Happy Cow. We've got people in there. I love Happy Cow. Is it Happy Carb or Happy Cow? It's Happy Cow. Um, yeah, Happy Cow, because the cows are happy if you eat vegan let's uh let's let's face it so also i want to talk to the new vegans about the the definition of vegan veganism is we'll just get it up uh vegan society so you can check out the vegan society they you know the vegan society coined the term vegan um and uh by donald watson 1944 veganism was founded and it was kind of founded off the back of the war at the time, you know, as a way of like bringing more peace to the world, I think. 
But it's, veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. And by extension, promotes the development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefit of animals, humans, and the environment. In dietary terms, it denotes the practice of dispensing with all animal products. Um, and basically, it's, a, it, it's, it's food is a lot of it, but it extends to other areas, of course, as well. It's a moral principle that extends to what you do. It's a way of living... And uh, I think if you have that moral principle where like, okay, I don't want animals to be exploited or treated cruelly or killed, um, how can I <clears throat> live in a way that seeks to exclude that as far as possible and practicable, then, you know, you're on a, you're on a good, you're on a, a good wicket there. Wicket is cricket. Let's have a look. Thank you, Gabby. I appreciate that a lot. Um, thank you so much. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, where, where's uh, where's some questions here? We got some more in. Um, we're gonna go. We got Instagram rolling as well, and we got Facebook and YouTube in the chat too. So, even if there's any vegans in here, what what are some things that you wish you knew? when you first, you know, when you were vegan curious, what would have helped you get over the line? Um, what, what, cause when I, I tell you when I first went vegan, I just went full raw vegan and I was eating like I was doing bodybuilding or like just weight training. And I started eating like hell almonds, like heaps of soaked almonds to get, cause that's, I was like, how else am I going to get protein? But what would have been a, a better decision for me to make would have been like this veganize what I was already eating, you know, and, that would have helped me out a lot if I just knew that. If I knew like, okay, I like sandwiches and I just made a vegan sandwich. Like I like scrambled eggs. I just would have made scrambled tofu. I like spaghetti bolognese. I would have just made vegan spaghetti bolognese and using uh, lentils or a vegan mince for the mince. Um, you know, I like hot dogs. Oh, I might as well have a vegan hot dog. I like uh, potato, potatoes. <laughs> potatoes are already vegan. <laughs> You know, vegan butter. You can just get margarine or find a, a vegan butter alternative. You know, so those types of things would have really helped me when I started. And I, I really wish I knew a little bit more about the animals before, when I first started too, so I could have um, changed some other things I would have known about. You know, so Dominion would have really helped. There wasn't there was Earthlings back then. Um, there wasn't there wasn't as much. So I went vegan eight years ago. There wasn't as much as there is now, like uh, in terms of resources. Um, so you're in a very fortunate time right now. There's so many resources. There's so much help. And Veganuary is an amazing, an amazing campaign that helps you know people. Even if if they do it for the month, and then they fall off, like at least you now you know that you can do it. And uh, what would the only thing holding you back would be yourself then, because all the everything you need is there. And I think if you're motivated enough, like if you know what happens to animals and you're against that, if you know what's going on to the environment and you're against that and you think, oh, wow, this is a really beneficial way for me to, you know, reduce the cruelty that I'm causing to the animals and to leave a lighter footprint. And uh, there's a bunch of vegan stuff available to me now. Like like I was driving home four o'clock the other morning and could go through the drive through and get vegan burgers. So that's how accessible uh, – vegan food is now and uh yeah it's just amazing it's crazy times like if you told me five years ago that kfc would have a vegan burger i would have just laughed because i just didn't think it was going to happen so let's have a look let's go nooch on everything yep people are saying nooch on everything here in instagram land what else we got nooch is actually lingo for nutritional yeast Um, have you have I, I've tried the McPlant burger and it's very good. They use Beyond Meat in the McPlant burger. Um, let's keep rolling. What else we got? Anyone got uh, any other questions? Um, So not not 
really want to talk about activism in this live stream. I want, I want, I want to talk to the new vegans. This was what this live stream is geared towards. So I know a lot of people have questions about me, about my activism, about this and that. But we really want to do this live stream for new vegans or vegan curious people who need some help, who want us to point them in the right direction. Um, of course, you can go on websites like uh, Veganuary. And uh, I, I recommend uh, also Challenge 22 for new vegans. Uh, for people curious, but it's Veganuary season and Veganuary is cranking right now. So, and there's a lot of people who are actually doing Veganuary right now. Here's another, here's another amazing tip for you. Do you know you can learn to build a house on YouTube? You can learn to build a car on YouTube. You can learn to fix your laptop on YouTube. So you better be damn straight sure that you can uh, learn to cook whatever vegan recipe you want also on YouTube. So I would utilize YouTube because literally if you just read how to make vegan, I don't know, let's think of a random recipe right now. What's a random recipe? Vegan Wellington? Vegan Wellington? Let's have a look. Oh, man. Hell vegan Wellingtons. Beyond Burger Lattice Wellington. How to make Vegan caramelized onion, chestnut, and mushroom Wellington. You know, what else? Vegan, you name it. Vegan lasagna. I want to make a vegan lasagna tonight, guys. Oh, I don't know how to make it. Oh, I'm doing Veganuary. This is so hard. Types it into YouTube. Oh, look, here we go. Avant-garde vegan, my famous vegan lasagna recipe. Ultimate vegan lasagna from Bosch. Cheap, lazy, vegan, vegan lasagna. Look, you name it. Come on. So you can even learn to make your own tofu if you're like... Oh, like I don't really want to buy any milk. It's too expensive. I'm just gonna go buy like a bag of oats and I'm gonna I've got a blender. I'm gonna make my own oat milk. You could do that if you want. If you if you've got that time, I don't have that that much time. So I'm not making my own oat milk, but you can. You can make your own soy milk, make your own uh, nut milk, coconut milk, whatever you want. Oh, coconut milk. So like let's just say you're looking for a cream replacement and you're making uh, whatever dessert, coconut milk. Although it's, uh, I mean, if you're looking to coconut cream, if you're looking for something that's not so healthy, people who put cream in their food, not really that, they don't, I don't think they really care too much about what's healthy anyway. So if you use coconut cream to make a creamy pasta sauce, say you want to make a vegan cabanara, you could use a little bit of vegan ham or a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, mushrooms and onions, and then you can chuck in coconut milk as your creamy substitute. Or you can use it in desserts. It actually whips up as well. Coconut cream whips up. So you can make amazing desserts with coconut cream. Coconut cream is delicious, calorie dense, and uh, very rich. Someone says, Exotics Rhea, Exotics, uh, Rhea says, I love tiramisu. How do I make it vegan? Very good question. And I'm just going to go. Here we go. Vegan tiram, tiramisu. All I did was just type it into... YouTube, how many search results? A million? Two million? No, there's at least. So we got uh, the Happy Pear have a recipe. Tasty have a recipe for vegan tiramisu. So just type it in the search bar on YouTube. How's that for a tip? Top tip. You know what I mean? Aha, uh -huh. someone here's got another good tip. Dat Yags. What's up, Dat? Indian food choices make it very easy to be vegan. Shout out to my Indian folks out there because they have dal uh, chickpea masala is usually vegan just uh, if you go into an indian restaurant just be careful of ghee because ghee is made from dairy um but a lot of indian restaurants have a bunch of vegan options poppadoms are vegan you know so indian food if you like indian food then you're going to find some great options i love dal myself and i love indian food um here we go. Catherine. Catherine Green says, for people who are newly going vegan, what is your advice for them not falling off? So my advice would be, um, if you're, this is to do with motivation or to, motivation's kind of, it's, it's more about commitment to not wanting to cause animal suffering and killing. You know, you don't, that, I, I honestly believe a really, for me, like anyway, is uh, checking out the film Dominion. Because if you're about to fall off, remind yourself why you started. 
and uh, then you can see what the animals are going through and then you can go, oh, is my 15-minute meal worth the animals going through that their entire lives or do, do I really want to support those industries that do that to the animals? Um, you know, and that's usually a pretty good reason for you not to fall off. Um, there's a few reasons sometimes people fall off. One, they might be out with friends and it might be social pressure. Um, so I think being adequately prepared. So where are you going for dinner tonight with your friends? Is there a vegan option there? If there's not a vegan option there, I mean, I would be super surprised, especially if it's the UK at Veganuary. Um, but you can just call the restaurant ahead of time and say, hey, um, can the, I'm, I'm coming down. Um, do you have any vegan options? Could you prepare me something? Boom, done. You don't have to worry about it being awkward at the restaurant because uh, – they already know you're coming. And, uh, you know, so it's usually something like that. You're, you're not prepared. It might be um, that you really, really want something that's not vegan and you have this weak moment. You know, <clears throat> I would say that's when you've got to think of the animals and think, okay, is it worth it this weak moment here? I would also say this. If you do happen to mess up, like don't just throw it all out the window and go, oh, my God. I really care about the animals. I, I ate this cake. Now I'm just going to not worry about being vegan, you know, because I ate this cake. It's over. It's over and done with. I'm just going to go buy a whole pig and kill them. And, you know, I'm never going to be vegan ever. So I just think like, don't, um, you know, if you do something like that, because like habits are built up over time and sometimes you just, you might m m mess up at the start or whatever. When I first went vegan, I would like have a sauce or something on um, something. And then I realized, oh my God, that's actually not vegan. You know what I mean? Sometimes I would have, I remember putting mayonnaise on a sandwich and I was like, oh my God, is that, that's got dairy. And I looked at it and looked at the back of it and it was actually vegan friendly. And I was like, oh my God, wow, that's vegan. So like you go through like this little stage at the start where you, where you're sort of like getting to know certain things. You're going to make a few mistakes here and there. Also, I would say that people usually if they're restricting their calories tend to binge a lot. And when you're in that hungry, hungry, hungry mindset, like, I don't care, just give it to me. That's when people might fall off. So I'd make sure that you're, you're eating enough food. Like, and not just thinking, Oh yeah, I'm just going to eat salad. Oh, broccoli's vegan. I'm just going to eat broccoli. Like broccoli is a side dish. You got to make sure you, you're filling yourself up um, and making sure you understand truly the cost of, you know, these, animal products. They are the most egregious, cruel industries on earth by far. The magnitude of the suffering and killing is beyond comprehension. And we need more people who are principled to stand up, stand up and say, like, I'm not, I'm not supporting those industries. I don't want anything to do with them. I'm not putting the dead bodies of those innocent beings in my mouth anymore. And uh, I'm just going to wait. I'm not going to eat that cake. I'm going to go on Happy Cow and look for vegan cakes nearby and uh, you'll find them you'll find them because if you, there's a 24 hour Tesco nearby. If you go into any um, petrol station nowadays, like I should do a video, how to be vegan in a petrol station. Like you would be so surprised how much vegan stuff is in a petrol station. Even in a, I've been in Australia cycling through the desert and I go to a petrol station and I can get cereal with soy milk and sugar and peanut butter and bread. And there's little uh, energy bars and there's so much stuff you would be so surprised. French fries, this and that. So you would be so surprised um, how easy it is not to fall off if you know what you're doing. If you've got happy cow, if you've got a good, you know, you know, just be, you're a pragmatic, pragmatic um, and uh, motivated by what happens to the animals. So let's keep going. What else we got? What else we got? Who else is uh, leaving me? Instagram press uh, questions. Okay, so this is an interesting one. Um, someone says, how does going vegan help with the environment? Well, I always like to, there's this landmark study by Oxford University. Um, you can, it's by Joseph Poor. He headed this study. And uh, basically, I'm going to get it up now. So this is one of the most, um, it's just one of the most eye-opening things I've seen. So they did, they did a study, a massive study, um, on 40,000 farms in 119 countries, okay? 
And uh, I'm going. How do I how do I share my screen so you guys can see this? Um, so let's just go boom, boom there. How do I add my screen? Share screen. Uh, share screen. Here we go. Boom. How's that? Uh, share here. Chrome tab. Bang. You guys see this? Okay. So now we're going. Okay, it's there. So it's right behind me. So it says, avoiding meat and dairy is the single biggest way to reduce your impact on, on planet Earth. The biggest analysis to date reveals huge footprint of livestock. Of livestock, It provides just 18% of calories, but takes up 83% of farmland. Avoiding meat and dairy products is the single biggest way to reduce your environmental impact on the planet. Um, so here, the new this new analysis shows that while meat and dairy provide 18% of calories, and just 30, 37% of protein, it uses the vast majority, 83% of farmland, and produces 60% of agriculture's uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, so basically, you can reduce. This is what he found. Um, if everyone adopted a vegan diet, you could reduce the Earth's farmland by 75%. Because a lot of like people get it sort of back to front. They think, so you can just find this. It's a, the Guardian uh, avoiding meat and dairy is the single big, biggest way to reduce your impact on earth. Super interesting. And you can actually find the entire study linked in this. Um, if you're like into reading massive studies, um, you can find the entire study linked in here. Pretty easy to find. Um, so yeah, if everyone on earth adopted a vegan diet, you could reduce the earth's farmland by 75%, which is huge. And that's all to do with like land use, water use, which is resource use. And if you if we have a population that is increasing, like we need more plant food to feed us. And why are we, why are we growing, using all this land to grow plant foods for animals? And then, you know, if you think about like use, generating all these plant foods, feeding them to our animal to get like this small payback, which is a small morsel of flesh. And how many, how many resources went into that small morsel of flesh? You know, it's just an inefficient, use of plant foods you know we're growing all this soya to feed to chickens uh cutting down the amazon making room to grow soya exporting that soya to from amazon to the uk to feed to chickens in factory farms you know why, why wouldn't we just be eating the soya directly do you know what i mean why wouldn't we just be eating these plant products directly it just makes it makes no sense um so yeah that's very interesting. So that's how it helps with it. That's one big reason it helps with the environment. It's also animal agriculture's leading cause of uh, ocean dead zones. And, and if you think about the ocean as well, if, you, if you've seen the movie Seaspiracy, like just what we're doing out there in the oceans is just horrible, sickening. It's just destructive, mass murder, torture in the oceans. Fishing vessels don't even have um, slaughter guidelines. So fish are just dragged out in massive um, trawling nets and just dumped onto a a boat deck to suffer and die really really horrible cruelty and all the bycatch um all the animals that are caught up in the nets uh the nets the sharks the sea turtles the seals dolphins you know it's just terrible and um you know the factory farm runoff runs out into the oceans causes uh, ocean blooms and ocean dead zones toxification it's just <sighs> yeah it's just not good like factory farming you know, grass, 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 grazing animals as well, which is they have to deforest to have those animals out in the grass and they cows need a lot of space. So there's heaps of different issues with it. And, and with the population increasing and everyone wants to eat meats, 8 billion people want to eat chickens and cows and fish. There's no, we're leaving no room for population growth. So it's just bad in so many ways. And it's, uh, Climate change as well, but I, I'm not really an expert on climate change. I, I'm not an expert on environment at all, but I know that generally um, that it affects the climate as well. Oh, get yourself a nice green juice into you. That'll make you feel amazing. Um, <clears throat> Amanda, you've come to the right place. This here is it's kind of like the live stream to give you tips. So first of all, <clears throat> what I would do, if I was you and Amanda, you sound like serious. Um, you could either, you could still sign up to G Veganuary if you'd like, or there's another resource that I use called challenge22.com. 
And uh, they basically offer you um, mentors and guidance and little challenges to do each day. So Veganuary, it is Veganuary time. So you can still sign up to Veganuary or Challenge 22. Once you have like, you know, a bit of a support network there, Challenge 22 offers a support network and a, a, a Veganuary will email you each day recipes and things like, things like this. Then you want to think about focusing first on food because veganism mostly is like what you eat, but veganism isn't a diet. Veganism is like, if you think of veganism as like this philosophy that you believe animals should be treated with respect, they shouldn't be exploited, treated cruelly or killed, okay, then you live a lifestyle that is in alignment with that, that principle. So that's what veganism is. It's kind of like you say, like it's similar to being opposed to racism or opposed to some other injustice. You're opposed to animal exploitation, cruelty, animal abuse. Basically, veganism is living in alignment with your philosophy against animal abuse. But in saying that, a lot of it is diet, what you eat, because most animals that are slaughtered are slaughtered for food. And most of the cruelty that happens on Earth, the vast, vast, vast majority, over 90% more, uh, happens because people eat animals. So look at your diet. Okay, let's have a look at your diet. What I what I would say is veganize what you already eat. So if you get up in the morning and you're like, I have a bagel with eggs or something, you know, egg bagel, you can make scrambled tofu instead of eggs. And scrambled tofu, if you get this stuff called black salt, which you can get from Amazon, you can get it from Holland and Barrett, specialty stores, it's got this eggy sort of taste and you can sprinkle that in your scrambled tofu you don't need to but you can and you can get nutritional yeast which is like amazing cheesy little uh supplement that it's it's delicious you could sprinkle that in uh garlic powder and you can scramble up tofu with some vegan cheese if you wanted to and it tastes delicious and you can have that in the morning so you've just veganized your breakfast basically and veganizing breakfast is super easy because you've got oats and berries and vegan yogurt which is like a soya yogurt or you can get oat yogurt um, you can get vegan granola, you can get plant milks, choose your plant milk, fruit, obviously lots and lots and tons and tons of fruit, fruits, vegan smoothies, get an amazing smoothie with flaxseed, with uh, blueberries, with banana, with some green handful of greens in there, soya milk, bang, there's your breakfast, done. Snacks are easy, you know, you could get like a you know, sandwich with hummus and with vegetables and with, uh, you can get all these amazing vegan um, sandwich items as well now um what do you have for dinner like dinner like i usually have spaghetti bolognese or have a curry or i have a burrito or a, so you just veganize those things and then what you do is you just go on youtube right and you watch people make it like i've got some cooking like uh some cooking videos on my channel as well um but not just me there's way better vegan cooks than me just type in what I eat in a day YouTube to get some good ideas or type in the actual recipe. Like I want to make vegan burritos. Boom. People were so creative with this stuff. So good. You could look up vegan food on Instagram and just go searching through, searching through, searching through, searching through. Like right now at your little fingertips, you've got so much to choose from. So many resources out there. But like YouTube for me, it's like the tutorial haven where you can learn anything. You could literally make your own vegan chicken. Like all you do is you get uh, flour. So there's a it's called washed flour, right? Try this. If anyone tries, has anyone tried this? Washed flour. So you get flour and they they make a dough and then they wash that dough, and then what's left is the protein from the flour, and then you cook it in you cook it in a stock of a veg, vegetable stock and then you fry it and it's it flakes up like like chicken and it's just the protein from the wheat check that out on youtube so anything you want basically spag bowl you could just replace the mince the which mince is just it's an animal who was raised shot in the head had their head cut off minced up into a million pieces it's essentially the dead body of an animal he wanted to live so instead of that you get some vegan mince or my number one tip for mints is TVP, textured vegetable protein. It is super high in protein. Uh, it's super healthy for you as well because it's got fiber, calcium, really healthy. TVP, you can get TVP from, you can, I like to order stuff online uh, because it's super easy for me. So that just comes in the post. Like you can find all this stuff online. Um, TVP and it, it comes dried 
and you rehydrate it. So you can just like pour some boiling water over it and rehydrate it and then just strain it off a little bit and then put it in your bolognese. Or you can just make your bolognese sauce with tomatoes and make it a little bit watery so that's, that it's got some room to absorb. And then you just put it in and it will absorb all the water. And I'm telling you right now, TVP is super low fat, super high in protein, and so meaty and tasty that you'll just be like, what? How, do, how did I not know about TVP? You know what I mean? You'll freak out. It'll freak you out. I love TVP. And um, it's a, it is definitely a top tip. It is a top tip from me to you. Um, so that's food. Food is, should be pretty easy. You get vegan ice cream. You can get vegan takeaway. You can use happy cow, the app repeating myself. Cause these are important tips. Happy cow is an app that you can find vegan options wherever you are in the world. And it's just, it's an interactive map. Happy cow. I always use it. I always use it. Been vegan for eight years. I still use it to this day, to this day. And, uh, it's super helpful. So happy cow. So that's your food done, right? Um, now, now you want to start looking at what else is my lifestyle is not vegan. Like I want to buy a sweater. So that sweater looks warm, but is it made of wool? You know, so you just check the tag, you go like, because I've got a, the wool industry they they like to humane wash the industry. It's not humane. It's not they they exploit those sheep for their wool, but they they specifically breed them for their wool. And um, a lot of cruelty happens in that industry. Most of the apparel wool comes from Australia. They do something called mulesing, which is cutting the back end of the sheep behind and down to the muscle, and it's really horribly cruel. A lot of uh, shearing accidents happen, and then they live export those animals on ships. A lot of them die on the ships, and they get killed in countries without slaughter guidelines. It's, it's just a horrible industry. Anyway, so you just check the tag. You go, is there any animal products? Is it is this cotton, polyester? You know, is there a, is there wool? Is there, you know, then you you sort of like looking at your clothing now. You know, is there fur? Is is there fur on my clothing? I don't really want an animal to suffer and die, so I can look good. Vegan makeup, right? You'd be surprised how much vegan makeup there is. Tarion, what about vegan makeup? What, 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 what we go? Do we have a guide? Where's my guide? Um, so my in my guide, we've got a little guide for vegan makeup, um, vegan cosmetics, and uh, basically, <clears throat> if you go on my website, so so let's go joeycarbstrong.com. You can even download uh, you can even download our little vegan guide for. Us. You know, joeycarbstrong.com. Let's go. Let's go together. Let's go to my, we're going to go together. All right, let's do this. We're going to my, what's this? Oh, we don't want that tab. Stop sharing. We want to share a different tab now. Let's go share screen. Here we are. Look at, we go on Chrome tab. Joey Carbstrong. Boom. Here we are. Why does it share so small? I want it to be bigger. Oh, look at that. Amanda, look at that. All right. So where is uh, activism downloads? Boom. Here we go. Activism downloads. You can still share that on Uh-huh. Good idea. So we've got the UK and Australian downloads. Sorry for anyone in the US. Can't help you there. We've got one coming for the US. So this has got why, how. Here we go. Here we go. So we're on my website. Now we've got the how. Is this scanning? Is this, why, why isn't it moving? Oh, I know. I know why. Okay. So luckily, luckily, um, I'm very savvy with this live streaming stuff. Um, let's go window. Let's go there. Let's go share. Okay. Now we're talking. So now you can see, you can download this on my website obviously. And, uh, it's got the how little chain, little, where to shop. Here we go. Cosmetics. So in the UK, you got super drug boots, lush, the body shop have the large range of big vegan products. These places have other vegan options or they are completely vegan and look out for the vegan label. Um, also elf cosmetics. Look at this one. Elf really good. Um, for vegan, uh, super cheap as well. There we go. Super cheap and affordable. Um, but Superdrug, they actually have everything labeled as vegan. 
and same with boots, I think. But um, so there you go. You got your cosmetics down pat. You know that's that's pretty good. And then you want to start looking at like, the, see, this is why I tell people food first because I don't want to overwhelm everyone. Like and go. Oh, like if you don't eradicate everything from your house right now, that's not vegan. You are just you're so bad. You're so bad. That's why I prefer to like stick with food first, and then like you can start thinking about okay. I've got the makeup that I've already got. That's that's done. But I want to buy some new makeup. And I really want to know if animals have been tested on or if there's animal products in the makeup. I want vegan makeup. And then you just start vegan makeup in the UK. You know what I mean? And then, you know, you go, well, wait a second. Like, I wonder if when I go for it, use my shower gel, is my shower gel even vegan? Like, these are the things that start coming into your mind. This is what happened with me. I started thinking, like, is my, is my shower gel vegan? Like, that's an interesting one. I wonder if that, then I go and look at it and I go, oh, no, nah, it's not. So what, I wonder if there's vegan shower gel. So then I found like some really good vegan shower gels. What, what's the one we use? Uh, 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 sorry, no. Original, original source. That's everywhere. You can find it everywhere, original source. And they've got like rhubarb, strawberry flavor, you know, you, and they're cheap as well. They're not like super expensive. I mean, I'm not rich, but, um, you know, you can get vegan anti-dandruff stuff as well from Tesco's. Tesco's have got, if you look on the back of a lot of Tesco's home products in their cosmetic, in their like, you know, the, where their shampoos and that are, you just turn them around and it says vegan. You know what I mean? So it's just, I hope that helps. You know what I mean? And I, I, I'm trying to like give you like a little step-by-step -step little, little guide. Like I don't want people to go, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. You, you're freaking me out. What do you mean shower gel isn't vegan? Like this is crazy. You're crazy. Veganism is crazy. It's something that sort of like, the natural progressions of you changing your diet. And then you go, well, I don't really want to support, you know, there's a reason why I buy a vegan, you know, shower gel. And like, even like if you go in my kitchen, we use vegan dishwashing liquid and stuff, you know what I mean? And they, they don't cost all that much different. They don't, they're cheaper. They're the same, same price or whatever. You know what I mean? So like there's things to, to think about. Like, for example, when I first went vegan, I had a pair of shoes, right. That I bought when I got out of, prison back in the days when I was naughty, I got out of prison, uh, bought these shoes. Then I went vegan a couple months later and I was wearing these shoes for a year or two and I didn't really know much about shoes. And a friend said to me, do you know those shoes actually have leather on them? And I was like, what? They were like Air Maxes or something. So I had them for a couple of years. Obviously I had bought them, so I wasn't buying new leather shoes, but like I didn't really want to wear them because I, well, I didn't want to wear them at all because I despise the leather industry. I despise the idea of wearing the skin that was torn off of an animal like a, that was more than likely tortured i didn't want to wear their skin so i felt sick and i just got rid of them <laughs> um but i didn't know you know what i mean so then i knew and then i knew like oh god next time i buy shoes i'm gonna make sure there's no leather on them you know what i mean so this is just something that you kind of you work out. So don't like when you go, oh, like this is too hard or whatever. It's actually not. It's actually not. And I know when you're like overpressure yourself because what you're doing now is like you're asking questions and you're, you're thinking about this, which is good. Thinking about like how can I live without, you know, I don't want animals going to the slaughterhouse on my behalf. I don't want them in a testing lab. I don't want them getting their skin ripped off of them so I can wear shoes, you know. Things like this. So keep going. Let's keep going. Who else wants some tips? These tips helping people? Someone says co-op has reasonably priced vegan ice cream. They do? Co-op? Actually, I've had it. I've had it. It's, it's Oh, it's good. That was tasty. Um, what do we got here? Mm. Mm. We got Kevin. Who's this? Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith, 20-year vegan. 20 years Kevin's been vegan. Now, if Kevin can do it, Anyone can do it. Isn't that right, Kevin? You've been vegan twice as long as me. And I bet you you're twice as handsome. There we go. <clears throat> so let's uh let's keep let's keep going. What do we got on Instagram? We, we you know we're providing a service here to new 
vegans or vegans who are, people are doing veganuary. So we've got one on um, Instagram here, and it basically says, uh, "Hello, Joey. I'm a new vegan, and I'm wondering what plant-based food I need that are best for calcium and protein, etc." So we're going back to the nutrients thing. So people do worry about nutrients when they go vegan. It's 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 interesting because people don't like when I before I went vegan, I never worried about nutrients. I just ate. I just ate what I wanted. When I wanted, sometimes I ate a bit of fruit and I thought, oh yeah, that's probably healthy. Sometimes I had like a bit of soggy lettuce and a burger and I was like, oh yeah, there's a bit of vegetables in there. Like I never really thought about nutrients until I went vegan because all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, what if like I'm going to die of protein deficiency? Like I was actually scared of not getting protein, which is crazy because all plants contain all nine essential amino acids in varying degrees. Um so like even lettuce has all nine essential amino acids. I wouldn't recommend just eating lettuce because you need them in you need enough calories to meet your protein requirements. But you know, like your average um, person who's not athletic probably need about between 50 and 80 grams of protein a day. You know what I mean? Like, but if you start if you're athletic, you might want more. But your your question is, where do I get those nutrients? Well, if you if you really want to know, right, and if you're really curious to know what what foods have what, and you're a bit of a like nutrient nerd like me, sometimes I like to like look into like, oh, how much protein has that got? Like, got a protein. Um, Chronometer the app. Do you want me to just get it up for you guys? You know what? Why not? It's Veganuary. It's like Christmas. It's Veganuary. We've got the whole Veganuary crew in. And we're going to give Chronometer a shout out. Not sponsored by Chronometer. They just paid me $2 million for this advert. No, they didn't. <laughs> Not sponsored. They just gave me $2 million to say this. No, they didn't at all. Um, let's go Chronometer. Here we go. It's free. Free app. Um, so here we go. Let's put me in the picture. Let's put me. There we go. Look at that. Looking fresh. Looking fresh. All right. So you know what? Um, I want someone to, you know what we're going to do? Let's, let's go here. Add food. I'm going to make a whole, I'm going to make a whole breakfast. So let's go frozen. So what do you have for breakfast? I, I like frozen blueberries. I'll probably just have a hundred grams of them. I might get some like oats, oats, uh, we're quick dry. I probably have a hundred grams of oats. That's a decent amount really. You're probably looking at more like 75 grams of oats. Or well, not 750 grams. Yeah, nah. 75 grams. Boom. So what else we got here? Then then you might want like, I don't know. Uh let's just let's just get some some ground flaxseed, you know? Ground flax. What do we got? Ground flax. You just probably want like 10 grams of that, you know, something like that. I like, I personally like soy milk. Um you know, say 150, 150 50 grams of soy milk. It's probably a splash. You cook that up. There you go. There's, and there's a little breakfast. 443 calories here. So then we've got protein, 17.8 grams of protein. You might say, Joey, I'm massive. I'm like, I'm getting, I'm getting shredded. I'm, I'm bodybuilder, bro. Like that is, that's not enough protein for a mouse. I need way more than a mouse. So then you just probably go like, okay, let, let's go um, vegan protein powder. That's a good one. Uh, I don't know. They're all the same to me, really. Um, let's go vegan protein powder. Let's chuck in. That's that's a that's not actually not a good one to be honest with you. What's the one I used to use? Um, let's go Vivo protein powder. Vivo Life. Protein powder. Oh, God. Uh, you you want to get a protein powder that's at least 60% protein. My protein? No. Bulk? What do we got here? Oh, yeah, this one's about 60. Okay, here we go. So, you know, you chuck in a scoop. One ounce. It's about a scoop. One ounce. Bang. Look at that. Look at the protein gain. 
you know, you might want to do that for breakfast if you're bodybuilding or something like that and you're a big guy and you want a bit of protein. Most bodybuilders, people at the gym, they do a protein powder anyway. Is my face looking hella big in that Instagram one? So there we go. So so let's let's go to let's go to the nutrients here. What do we got here? Boom, look at the omega 3s off the charts, dude. Omega 3 is off the charts. What else we got? Protein's not quite yet there yet, but it's only the first meal. It's only the first relax. It's only the first meal. Relax. Um, we got some B1 in there, we got this and that. So then we're going to go, okay, what? it's lunchtime, bras, I'm hungry. What do I have for lunch? Sometimes I just have, let's get some tofu. I love tofu. If you cook it right, it's amazing. If you don't cook it right, it tastes crap. Just like if you were to eat raw chicken, it wouldn't taste nice. Or even if steamed chicken breast with no salt, it would be crap. So look, here we go. We've got some tofu. I, I like the firm. Get the firm. Tofu, raw, raw, silken, uh, not cooked, firm. Uh, no, that's not drained. Uh, you know, something like firm tofu, bang. Okay, let's go 250 grams, or well, not 200 million, 250 Gs, 250 Gs. Boom, look at that. Bang, tofu, bang. You might want like, you might want to sizzle that up with some garlic and this and that. I'm not going to put everything in. I don't usually put everything in, but you might want some greens. Broccoli, let's go. Broccoli, boom. I love broccoli, so I usually have like, let's go 350, steam it up, put some uh, put some stock powder on there, make it epic. You know what I mean? <clears throat> let's go sweet potato. Sweet potato. No, look how I spelled sweet potato. Sweet potato, boom. I usually weigh it raw, so I might just go, oh, let's go 250, sweet potato, bang. Boom. Check it out. You don't eat it raw. You obviously cook it. And, uh, you know, you might want to sprinkle a little bit of, like, hummus on top. I don't know. Like hummus. Who doesn't like hummus? So you might just sprinkle, like, I don't know, 80 grams of hummus on top. Bam, look at that. That's looking good. See? Look at the protein there. 85 grams already. You know what I'm saying? Um, so now we're starting to see a little bit here. Look. So now we're starting to see, okay, so this is the, the good thing about about chronometer is you, you basically start to understand, okay, what's got carbs, protein, and fat? Like this isn't something that just vegans should be doing. This is something that, look, I've nearly, I've met 99% of my fiber requirements already, uh, 187% iron requirements, 53% calcium, vitamin A is off the charts just from 250 grams of sweet potato, vitamin C, and you start to think, okay, what, what gave me all that vitamin Vitamin A, and you start to see, okay, it was the sweet potato, a little bit of the broccoli. That's got vitamin A. Um, you know, and you go, well, I need, what's all that vitamin K from? And you go, okay, broccoli's full of vitamin K. All right, I know that for next time. Not sure why people would be too concerned about those things, but some people are. Where am I getting all my protein from? Tofu is so good protein. And what else has it got? What else has tofu got? I'll show you what tofu's got. Where is it? Where is it? Where am I getting my calcium from? Broccoli, bang, tofu, bang. Look at that, calcium, boom. Um, so you see what I'm talking about? Now let's go dinner. Let's go dinner. Um, let's go, uh, what do we want for dinner? I like having a bit of brown rice. This is like, this is healthy. This is this is healthy. I get uncooked. Let's go, 100 grams, bang, boom. Might get some um, vegan chicken. Let's go, what do we got? Um what do we got? Vegan chicken. What what are they called from uh Iceland? The Iceland? Um vegan imitation chicken bites. Ah, oh, that's good enough, I suppose. Um, we'll do two of them. It's a lot of calories. Boom. Chuck it in. Bang. And we might we might want some mixed veggies. Half a cup, boom. Know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? I've got 2,000 calories here, 120 grams of protein. What's missing? So this is what you do, right? <clears throat> so now you've got 2,000 calories, which is decent. You probably want a bit more if you're energetic and that. I mean, you could have like, we could have like, you know, some, some make some banana and ice cream, frozen bananas. We can go frozen banana. You blend it up with some soy milk. Um, I'm, a, I'm a little bit hungry still. Let's go here, frozen frozen veggies, uh, frozen fruit, sorry. Um, 
let's get a couple of blended up in a blender with some uh, soy milk. Um, you want it fortified, you can get fortified soy milk. So let's go to about, about 150 soy milk, bang, because you might want to get some extra calcium as well. You know what I'm saying? Bang, you blend that up. You can have a little bit of like, I don't know, maple syrup. Boom. Don't want that much. Probably 20 grams. Bang. There you go. If you it, and you start looking here, you start going, okay, what's got what? I'm, I'm low on vitamin D. Okay, the vitamin D you should be supplementing anyway. Vitamin E. Interesting. So you might want to change your soy milk to almond milk, and then you get your vitamin E, and there's a lot of uh, vitamin E in something like a pepper, a red pepper. All right, so red pepper, you might want 200 grams of red pepper to put in your brown rice with your, um, you know, you made a little stir fry before. Where's your vitamin E? Boom, 70%. 70, 70 I don't know how much of that you really need to get. You can, it's, it's, if you want to start like micromanaging your nutrients, lysine's a little low, big deal. Like it's, it's not like something you have to hit every single day. You want to just look at this zinc. Oats, zinc, bang, a selenium, boom, oats. Oats have got heaps of good minerals in the May. So you know what I'm saying? Um, and then you can sort of like muck around with it, muck around with it. If you want less carbs, more protein, you can muck around with it. But this is a super good app to do it. B12, you should be supplementing vitamin D. So let's just go. I'll, I'll show you my supplement. Holland and Barrett, vegan. Uh, I spelled Barrett wrong. Holland and Barrett. Vegan multi multivitamin, right? One tablet, bang. Here we go. Look at that. Do you see? See what just happened then? Boom. Boom. Everything's off the charts now. Because all I did, which I do it every morning anyway, is took my multivitamin, if you're worried. Do you know what I'm saying? It's got B12 in it. It's got everything. It's got everything in it. Look at this. Boom, boom, boom. Off the charts. Um, <clears throat> so there we go. I hope that that has helped. What's going on here with my little camera? I hope that has helped anyone. It's called Chronometer, this website. Chrono, C-R-O-N-O, -O, meter. I hope that's helped anyone who is a little bit worried about nutrients. Now, you shouldn't be micromanaging nutrients. You should just be eating a, a decent amount of whole foods each day. Don't be silly. You know, have some red vegetables, have some green vegetables, have some beans and have some, I don't know, nuts and seeds on top of your oats. A good way to, to kickstart getting enough nutrients is with a smoothie. Now, we're talking about health, and I know people get scared of being unhealthy when they go vegan, but you, a lot of these things, people that aren't vegan don't do. They don't go out and go, oh, I've got to go on chronometer. They're just eating like a sandwich and having a coffee and you know having an ice cream and maybe a bit of fruit here and there, but they're not micromanaging their, their nutrients. It's almost like people think that when you go vegan, you've got to start micromanaging anything. I personally think you should look after your health. I do. I don't get enough sleep sometimes. You might see me after being in farms all night, just like zombified, making a video going, please watch my, my premieres coming out. It's just because I'm tired, right? But in terms of like my, my like I, I'll make one of these green juices and my, my nutrients are off the charts. They're off the charts. You know, so look, as long as you're eating, say, 70% whole foods, good good amount of fruit, you know, frozen berries, greens, good amount of vegetables, good amount of whole grains, 20% treat yourself. Treat yourself. Um, if you start feeling tired, it's probably you might not be eating enough calories, not enough fruit, you know, too much vegan cheese, not enough fruit. You know what I mean? It's just like not enough sleep. You know what I mean? So, yeah, they're my little tips for nutrients for the new peeps, the new vegans, even long-term vegans, if you're starting to feel a bit crap, make yourself a smoothie, make yourself a green juice, um, get some more sleep, make sure that you're having your multivitamin each day, you know, and don't try to diagnose yourself, uh, which I see people doing. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to diagnose myself. I think I'm tired because I'm iron deficient. And I'm like, have you got doctor's telepathic powers? How do you know you're iron deficient? Like, have you had a blood test? No. Then why are you diagnosing yourself, self-diagnosing through paranoia? I see it all the time, and it's not good. Um, so 
Vegan food and low fiber, please. I've got an illness. Again, so basically, I'm not a registered dietitian either. So I've be, got to be careful, like, register. My camera keeps being funny. Uh, I've got to be careful, like, giving people specific dietary advice. But I can tell you, like, that chronometer will help you there too because there's a lot of, ref, you know, if you need more refined foods, you can have, like, white pasta. You can have white rice. You can have, um, um, you might be better with processing fruit and i don't know what type of fiber as well because there's two types of fiber there's soluble and insoluble fiber um soluble fiber is that gel gelatinous fiber and insoluble fiber is the fiber that is like a brush and it's a lot more harsh so maybe you want to steer away from the harsh fiber and more to the insoluble fiber because you, you you know fruits and vegetables have fiber and you need fruits and vegetables so you're gonna have to eat fruits and vegetables i don't think any doctor would tell you not to eat fruits and vegetables but if you do a juice or a smoothie um, without too many greens, so like if you do a juice, you can get the benefits of um, greens and vegetables without there being too much fiber, okay? Um, and But that is a question for a vegan registered dietitian who would be able to help you. And there are all you have to do is maybe Veganuary even, even have some resources for, for this, but on Challenge 22... There's vegan registered dietitians who can help you with all these specific questions, and they're actually qualified to talk about this. Um, but Chronometer will help you with low fiber uh, vegan foods and had little tricks to take the fiber out and still be healthy because you don't want to be like, oh, I'm just going to eat sugar because that's no fiber and sugar. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, why did that come back up? Um, let's keep going. Let's keep going. What have we got? They've got a million comments in here. Million comments. Um, so let's go back to. Sorry if I missed it. if I missed your comment. Leave it again. Leave it again. We're going to do fifteen more minutes. So. So Billy, Billy Jack Barton actually made an interesting point. He says, apart from B twelve, which we all know everyone should be getting B twelve, and you should be supplementing it, vegan or not. Um, are there any other vitamins that may be beneficial to me on a vegan diet? Um, like, there is the case for iodine, I'm pretty sure. Iodine. Interesting. And I'll show you how I get mine. Oh, well, I get it through my multivitamin because the multivitamin has iodine, right? But there's also, like, if you like these little – where is it? Am I gonna am I gonna go back in the focus? Focus? There we go. Look at that focus. Um, is he gonna focus on this? Crispy seaweed. Just like seaweed. I mean, if you like seaweed, some people don't. But sushi, you could make yourself some vegan sushi, and you could just use avocado and uh, tofu instead of um, killing the fish. Mm. Microphone's in the way. Mm. But it's not like I like people get freaked out that oh my god if I don't get my iodine tomorrow like I'm gonna have an iodine deficiency but just get a multivitamin covers all your bases. Um, there's also iodine and iodized salt and you know my multivitamin has zinc. You see my multivitamin. You know what I mean? Just uh, my multivitamin just. My multivitamin just rocked every anti-vegan's world, didn't it? It was just like, boom, boom. Look at that. Look at all those. Like, does it, look at my, my chronometer, dude. You know what I mean? And uh, the thing is, when you're looking at your your diet, it's about your t the totality of your diet. So you can have some bad days. You can have some off days. You know, it's about what you did month to month, you know, not not, day to, not moment to moment. You're going to be like, oh, if I don't have my B12 in one minute, I'm – gonna die of deficiency it's like you want to all round be making sure you're having enough fiber if you're not going to the toilet properly you need to increase your fiber okay if you're feeling a bit low maybe you need to increase your fruit and calories um if you believe you're deficient and you're getting enough iron on chronometer then you might have an absorption issue so you might need to go to the doctor and it doesn't matter if you're a meat eater or not, you, if you have absorption issues, you can't get your iron. You don't absorb it. Don't absorb it. So um, then you might need 
to look at some type of supplementing, iron infusion. I don't really know what they do for that, but they're specific scenarios. Um, for your general person, should be good. Should be good. Um, let's have a look here. Um, someone says, uh, Kemp, what's Kemp? Um, someone says iodine D3 and vitamin E. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Let's keep rolling. We got a, we got another 10 minutes to help, uh, the new vegans and, uh, veganery folk. I do want to make a pretty clear, like, Veganism is a philosophy that is at its in its roots. It's rooted in animals' rights, like the concept that animals deserve the right not to be exploited, treated cruelly, and killed. You know what I mean? Like that that animals matter inherently because there is an individual inside of that animal. They look different. Their species is different. But they, their their experience matters to them, so they deserve to be protected. Because when you look around and you experience reality and you see everything with you with your eyes and you're feeling everything with your sentience and you know you're conscious, you're a conscious being. If someone harms you or takes your freedom away from you or threatens to kill you, that matters to you. Now. The same applies to like a pig or a chicken. You might think, oh, who cares about them? They're insignificant. Doesn't matter to me what happens to some chicken. But when you when you actually look at that chicken and try to put yourself in the position of that chicken, it matters a lot to that chicken because that's their only life. And they're born into bodies that fail them. They grow so fast now, like in a month they're at that slaughter weight. And their little legs fail them, and they're suffering in sheds all around the UK, all around the world. And then the industry will come out and say, like, this is humane, red tractor approved, RSPCA approved, and this, you know, they 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 pummel people with images of green grass and pastures, and they never show you the images of a slaughterhouse and the animal pleading for their life, getting chopped up into pieces. They don't show you these images. We do. We show you these images. The people who are selling their body parts do not want you to stop eating their body parts that they're trying to sell you. So they do anything to market this to you. And they 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 want to avoid you feeling bad about it. So essentially they tell you what you want to hear and tell you that something humane happens along the way. That, hey, we raised them really nicely on this green grass before we jammed them into a truck, transported them to a murder factory and cut their heads off. Do you know what I mean? Or in the case of pigs and birds, put them into controlled atmosphere stunning units and uh, lowered them into a dungeon full of CO2 gas where they suffocated to death. Um, you can imagine how terrifying that would be. So when you talk, think about veganism, don't think of it as a diet. Think of it as a belief that animals' rights matter and they should be respected. And the extension of that is that I should live in a way that respects their rights as far as practicable. So yeah, so that's what I want you all to to know. And uh, yeah, so every if you if you live your life with that principle, the forefront of your conscience, everything you do from that point should be in alignment with that. And if it's not at all times, you you might you might go, I didn't know, I didn't know that that industry was cruel. I didn't know horse racing was bad. You'll learn. You'll learn along the way. Like, there's so many things that I didn't know when I first went vegan, and then now I do know. And um, like, I wouldn't feel don't feel bad if you didn't know. You just learn. You're on a you're on a little like journey of discovery, discovering these things. What I will say say is that when you find out that about what happens in these industries, then you do know. So then you have a responsibility to act. And then the natural progression for me for going vegan, like, you know, I went vegan, I was trying to work everything out, like what's vegan, what's not. Like the natural progression for me was to speak up for the animals. And that's a lesson I want everyone to take away because like you probably went vegan because you heard or saw something and someone said something to you. Is it like a group of messages that were 
planting seeds and then you decided, you know, one day one day you just decide I'm going to give it a go, you know. I actually I care about the environment, I care about the animals, I, you know, and you, you decided to give it a go. But now now you're gifted with this knowledge that not many people are aware of, you know what I mean? So the natural progression of that point is to do something, say something, get involved with doing activism or saying something on your social media or talking to friends and family about it or sharing a documentary with them, doing these little pragmatic things. So if we have thousands of people doing that, millions of people doing that, like people that I educate have reached hundreds of millions of people from on uh, the media, social media, newspapers, uh, TV shows, things like this, reach so many people. And all those people, after hearing my message, or the message that I have, it's not my message, it's the vegan message, basically. It's a message that they heard from me, then they go out and they become voices for that message too. And they go out and speak to a group of people over the course of their lives. And then those people go out and speak to a group of people over the course of their lives. And, um, and luckily, I'm not the only vegan advocate on earth. There is tons of vegan advocates. We all have different approaches, but we all sing the same tune. We all have the same message and organizations and long-term vegan activists, short-term vegan activists, social media activists, street activists, investigators, is all of us working in, in sync and, and you can be an activist too. Um, you just have to sort of redefine in your mind what you think an activist is. It's just being proactive and speaking up and sharing information and waking other people up. And um, so if someone woke you up, you can be the person to wake someone else up and nothing feels better than other than going vegan yourself is that impacting others to do the same. And you think to yourself, you know, I decided to go vegan or to do Veganuary because I wanted to create an impact. Um, what bigger, what, what b bigger impact you could leave if you influence one, two, three, ten, 10, a hundred people to make that same change. You've just magnified your impact, haven't you? So how, how much power you have just from the knowledge that you have now and it feels really good when someone messages you and emails you and goes, you know, like I'm vegan because of you and now I'm an activist because of you and now I've turned all these people vegan because of you. Because it, because, and, and, and the thing is like, I only heard, I heard this message from others too. You know what I mean? It was, a seed was planted and then I started looking into it, you know, and there was many educators before me who left their own sort of trail of vegan advocates, you know what I mean? So, I mean, it, just trying to like leave you with a little bit of inspiration as well. So like, it's not, it doesn't st end here, although this is start. Um, I hope that I see a bunch of people who are doing Veganuary this year, a bunch of new vegans this year, who go on to create a bunch of new vegans for next year. And that's how we create change. And that's how we get the snowball effect. And it goes on to change the world. <clears throat> so we'll take one more question before we leave and uh you know what i'm actually not going to take a question i'm just going to direct you to some websites so veganuary amazing website um a challenge 22 as well great website watch the film dominion Dominion on YouTube to learn about what happens to animals. Uh, you can go to my website for um, little vegan guides, and uh, which you can print out, or you can download onto your phone. Check out Happy Cow. It'll be your friend. It'll find all the vegan stuffs for you. Um, just get to learn and get to learning. It's a it's a amazing thing to be armed with knowledge and learn as much as you can and. Yeah, and uh, you'll be just fine. So I hope everyone enjoyed my Veganuary New Vegans, Vegan Curious, helpful little live stream. Um, good luck on your vegan lifestyle journey. And I hope that uh, you're vegan long into the future. And yes, thank you all for tuning in. Thanks to everyone for your support and to. Thanks to everyone, basically, even if you're being nasty. Thank you, too, for tuning in and for helping the engagement of the live stream. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you all 
very soon and uh, take it easy.